Welcome back to The Compressor Guru. Today we've got a machine we've never worked on here on the channel before. Actually, I've never worked on one of these before, but I'm a competent professional. This is an Atlas Copco LE20. This is a uh, single stage, and you usually find these on service trucks, lube trucks, uh, portable operations. This particular one was driven direct drive with a hydraulic motor and we're going to show you what blew up. Uh, the camera wave is going to sneak in here and show you what we know about this machine. So if you look here there's something missing and the rest of the machine is fine and so this is not a complete rebuild. This is a repair the customer has the truck sold that this goes on and we've got to get it working. He doesn't want it rebuilt. It's just gone. We're just going to fix what's wrong and we're going to go do exploratory surgery so to speak to find it. So here we go. We got to pull our head off and before we do that I want to show you the other side real quick. So it was interesting that this compressor did not have a tag on it, but we did know it was an Atlas Copco because of the uh, fan cover. The other head's off of it because we took the head off and got the bore and the stroke and were able to find out that this is an LA-20 machine and then got the parts book. So we're going to start tearing her apart now. It's kind of fun in the respect there's only two size bolts I've found on this so far. And there's 17 and 13. The only bolts I've found so far have been a 17 and a 13. That's, I'll give that a thumbs up for that. I already had this loose. I put it on for show. There's only four bolts holding the fan cover on. And we've gone over this rule many a time. Are you going to help with it, Bell? You can take bolts out with an impact, but do not put them in. Correct. She can't be around here that long without learning something. Don't go. your pan to catch all those. I have a box behind me. Ah. So I do find it interesting that with all the engineering that I have found in this that's pretty neat, I'll point it out as we pull the head off, but instead of having an exacting standard they have to hit for the intake manifold, they simply used a big piece of plastic. And they used a... Uh, And they used the underside of the plastic for the breather up out of the crankcase. So what's down in here is the one from the other side. Yeah. That was close. Detached that very well. We get that <laughs> point down. <to> <laughs> so, <laughs> there was literally nothing holding that on. <laughs> wow. 
Wow. The real question is, where did the piston go? The rod's down in there. That's kind of amazing. So it was all in pieces. Yes, it is. So with help from the camera wave, we got this turned over. By the way, I'm still recovering from the most recent surgery. We've got nine machines to tear down and ten machines to put back together. So we're going to take... This is actually the discharge manifold. This is a cooler attached to each cylinder, the, and I'm not going to take the manifold off that comes from each cylinder, but it is an ingenious way how they take and limit some vibration and make it so that it doesn't have to be fitted perfect for the discharge muffler or discharge manifold and the uh, intake manifold don't have to be machine perfect to make this V-twin work. The bottom of this all comes apart. And this really wasn't a V-twin, it was a V-single whenever you got it. Ha ha ha! <laughs> yeah, that is. Almost turned into me, into me totus. <laughs> so, but uh, we're going to take this loose and we're just going to let it hang there for now. And this machine is a $9,000 pump and after looking at the crankshaft, I'm not sure the crankshaft will be saved. The other connecting rod has a mark on it. I don't want to change the other connecting rod if we don't have to. We're trying to fix this as cheap as possible for the customer, but I don't want to fix it so it runs five minutes, he sells it and goes down the road and blows up. So. Uh, We'll talk more about the economics of it after we do a parts list. But uh, we're getting there. that everything on here is a 17 millimeter. We have a mounting bar. Now we don't have a mounting bar. But at least it didn't fall on your foot. No, it didn't fall on my foot. I moved my foot, it didn't fall on my foot. I'm gonna put those back in so we don't lose those. We know right where they go.
bolts are out. We're not loose. Must be something still in there. No, I... Maybe it's the piston holding it on. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I used to drink, folks. <laughs> So we found the piston. It's <laughs> a big mess. It is a big mess. Oh, there's the expander ring from the oil. So what do you think happened to this? I have no idea. I think the cylinder blew apart. <laughs> <laughs> so folks, I realize we haven't been out here that long today, but we're going to have to do some cleanup. We're going to do some uh, parts list, and I'm going to have to take some emery cloth to that crankshaft and see if the crankshaft can be saved. Well, it's a few days later, folks, and we went through the parts book, and we looked more of the parts in the compressor. It's going to need both cylinders, and they don't sell the cylinder individually. They sell it as a kit with the cylinder, piston, and rings. Those kits are pricey. Uh, the filter, uh, a couple of bearings, shields, uh, rod bushings that don't come with the uh, rods, um, more miscellaneous parts, and our parts total without the crankshaft because I don't have a current number for a crankshaft but the parts total right now is five thousand four hundred and seventy three dollars plus we need the crank plus we need an overhaul gasket kit plus I can't get an answer on if the rod inserts come with the new connecting rod um, some time back, I, I'm sure I told y'all that I was thrilled that Atlas bought Quincy because Atlas compressors I didn't think much of. And I'm not talking about their screw compressors. They make a high-end screw compressor, helical screw. But when it comes to their piston pumps, I was never a fan. Well, once again, I'm back to not being a fan of the Atlas brand compressors. I'm glad they're using the... Quincy uh, compressors for their small recips and this is a perfect example why. A new pump is $9,000 without getting a price on the crank and a couple little parts we are at $7,390 to rebuild this. We're only $1,700 short and at the price of some of these parts it will not surprise me to see that's what the crank's going to cost. So I'll call the customer Monday. I'm not even going to keep chasing these parts. If he can give me the okay on a new machine, we're not going to even chase these parts because uh, this isn't worth rebuilding. The bottom line is it needed both uh, cylinders, uh, both connecting rods because the other connecting rod was damaged and I wouldn't feel right about leaving it in there even if it would run because sooner or later it's going to fail. Um, so here's an LE20 and there's a lot of junk aluminum in this pump. Uh, back to the regular camera work. This is the compressor guru working on an Atlas LE20 and you can see the damage. We'll be back and let you know what happens next. Thank you. God bless. Have a good day. Thank you for watching this episode of The Compressor Guru. Please hit like and subscribe and use the notify bell so you will know when the next new episode is released from The Compressor Guru. God bless you and have a great day.